So let me talk a little bit. I'm going to spend about 10 minutes talking about Bartram's travels in East Florida, uh, a little bit about his trace. Um, I'll try not to cover too much ground that we've already covered. And then I want to shift gears and talk about the Bartram Trail. Well, I mean, what is the Bartram Trail? To talk about it as both a concept and as a reality, as a, as a recreation trail that exists throughout the Southeast. But I, I want to begin with Bartram's travels to East Florida. As, as we already know, this was his second time to East Florida. The year, the year is 1773, and I'm going I'm, I'm to begin it with in, on the Georgia coast. Uh, Bartram had just finished a journey to the Cherokee Corners. In fact, he was on the surveyor's expedition to mark out some of those new, uh, new purchase lands that Catherine was talking about. Um, at the Treaty of, of Augusta, those lands were indeed ceded to, to white settlers to the colony. Uh, as you might, might imagine, the Creeks were not very happy about the settlement. Um, in fact, tensions ran very high along the, the front, along the frontier in both Georgia and Florida. Um, kind of compounding that tension was the murder of two Cherokee Indians shortly after Bartram's travel. Um, Near, near the Tugaloo River. Uh, that murder was avenged, but, but tensions still remained high. Um, in fact, in fact the, the culmination of them, of them, you might say, occurred that, that Christmas in 1773. Uh, the Creeks massacred white settlers at, at Wrightsboro, which is a settlement just west of Augusta. So this, this, I, I just want to give you some, some sense for the violence that that did exist along this frontier and, and the tension that, that existed as well too. So, so Bartram was on the Georgia coast. He initially was thinking about traveling to Creek and, uh, Creek and Cherokee country. He wanted to travel up to the mountains because that was new territory for him. But, but as, as he confessed in his letter to his father, that was not possible. I mean, the violence that existed in the frontier prevented that. And in fact, in fact he count, he had to live with that violence as he headed south into, in, into East Florida. So anyway, so Bartram worked his way through from Savannah down to the Altamaha. He eventually left from Frederica. As Catherine mentioned, he, he very much was uh, the patron of, I mean, he, he very much was the benefactor of the patronage of Spaulding. And he left in one of Spaulding's ships, and he had letters from Spaulding. In fact, he, already from Savannah, he had shipped down his trunk, and he had shipped down many of his supplies. Now, as, as we probably know, those supplies were, were moved from Spaulding's lower store to Murphy's Island. And the reason they were moved was because of violence that occurred between, between colonists, between traders, and, 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 and the Creeks. Um, so anyway, so Bartram is sailing down, sailing down from Frederica, uh, basically along today's intercoastal, uh, uh, intercoastal way. Uh, they're just west of Cumberland Island, and, and their ship encounters a ship heading north from, from Spaulding's lower store. And, and there, there they learn about violence at the upper store. Um, the captain is alarmed. He decides to turn the ship around and head back up to Frederica. But Bartram wants to head south. I mean, his trunk is, his trunk is south. He wants to continue the journey. So the captain allows Bartram to disembark at Cumberland. Bartram then winds his way down from Cumberland to Amelia Island, um, eventually working his way down to uh, working his way down to Calford. Uh, from there, with, with the help of Mr. Egan, who was the uh, basically the proctor for the Percival Plantation, Bartram then acquires a small sailing craft, which he then begins to head upstream on the St. Johns and. The first two days are pretty rough. In fact, I think he only makes 12 miles progress because of heavy winds. Um, he eventually camps near Picolata. They, the, um, on the third day, he, he has a favorable wind and is actually able to, to clock about 24 miles progress all the way down to Rolleston, which is just across the river. Uh, at Rolleston, that's where he learns about his trunk having been moved from the lower store to Murphy's Island to secure it. And he sets off the next day for the lower store. And, and um, in fact, he sails right past, he sails right past Murphy's Island, and it's two sentinels that are on the island that actually flag him down and say, hey, you know, <laughs> your, your luggage is here. So, so anyway, 
Bartram made two trips by land um, from, from the lower store to, to the west, and he made two trips up the St. John's River. Both the trips, his destination up the St. John's each time was the Beresford Plantation. When he headed west, one of the trips was to, um, was to Alachua Savannah, or today's Payne's Prairie, and the second trip was all the way to the Suwannee River to, 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 to uh, Telesochti. And I'm gonna shift gears here and just talk a little bit um, about some of his trips. As you might imagine, the two trips by land were along the trading path that basically left today's Stokes Landing, worked its way to the southwest uh, by present day Rodman, and then, and then headed, headed to the northwest to Halfway Lake or to Cowpen Lake. So that, that was his route west. And as you might imagine, the, the river trips were up the river. The first trip was actually by himself, and that didn't work out so well. Um, in fact, he, he, he tried to find um, a companion to go with him um, on the trip and, and was unsuccessful. So he made it up to, uh, on both occasions, he stopped. And here's, here's a map of his journeys up the St. John. On both occasions, he stopped at Mount Royal. and, and, and the on the first occasion, he tried to find a companion to go with him. Wasn't successful in that. Um, and then he was able to actually tow along with another vessel that was heading into the lake. Uh, even, even on that occasion, as he was towed in, um, they made it about three miles into Lake George, and storms turned them away. So, uh, but, the, but the next day, they were successful heading up, upstream to, uh, to the upper store. Uh, I just wanted to, to you know, this, this is one of, uh, I think one of the more interesting passages in the travels, and thank you, Tom, for, for I'll, I'll, I'll add to the theme here, but um, this is Bartram's description of the travels, looking at Mount Royal, and he talks about 50 yards distance from the landing place stands a <coughs> magnificent Indian mount. Uh, at that time, there was a very considerable extent of old fields. Round about the mount, there was also a large orange grove together with palms and live oaks. Extending from near the mount along the banks downwards, all of which had since then been cleared, cleared away to make room for planting ground. But what greatly contributed towards completing, you have to pardon his spelling, the, the magnificence of the scene was a noble Indian highway. So you, you, have this, you have this image of what he saw, and you may ask, well, when did he see it? But, which is a good question, but, but there's this image of what he saw, and then there's this, this visage that he has in his mind of the mount. But then there's also what he now sees today, and he, and, and he kind of breaks into, well, that venerable grove is now no more, and has been cleared away and planted with indigo, corn, and cotton, but since deserted. There was now scarcely five acres of ground under fence. It appeared like a desert to a great extent, and terminated, and terminated on the, the land side by frightful thickets an open pine forest. With Bartram's description, you clearly see the kind of sense of loss about the loss of, of this grove and, 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 the, and, the, and the, the site that he had. You know, was, was this the, the visage that he had in 1765 or maybe some other trip as Tom was mentioning? His destination heading up to Beresford on each and every occasion was the upper store, which is near today's Astor. And as I mentioned before, the second trip by land heading to the west was to the Telesochti. And this is, a, this is a photo from near Manatee Springs. And here's a photograph of, of Beresford. And the second time that Bartram headed up the St. John's is, is the time, he, here again, he was, he was in the company of, of a, he was with a trader's vessel heading up. This is where they stopped at Salt Springs Run, and this is where his famous description of Salt Springs um, is found in, the, in his narrative. So, so what is the Bartram Trail? I mean, we, we know Bartram traveled. He made these four trips from Spalding's lower store to you know, two up the river to East Florida. We also know that he made trips you know, through North Georgia, a trip over to today's Louisiana, a trip up into the mountains. So what is the trail? Um, as we know, the uh, let me talk a little bit about what the trail is not. I mean, the trail is not a 2,300-mile footpath. Um, the trail is not a 2,300-mile paddling path. There, there were some people in the 1970s who thought it should be, and, and maybe it should, but it, that is not how it played out. And, and I would argue that, that it probably should not be because such a path would take us 
you know, it would take us through private property. It would also take us maybe, maybe along sites or, or in, into areas that we just wouldn't want to go. I was asking Catherine yesterday, would you want to walk, would you want to walk from Augusta to Columbus, Georgia along the, the GSX train tracks? And, you know, probably not. And, and, and this may seem a little bit extreme, but let, let me give an example. Um, but let me put this into a context first, and that is in, in the 1970s, starting in 1975, there was an effort to, to create a Bartram Scenic Trail. And that effort began with representatives from each of, of, the, uh, of the seven primary Bartram states, including Tennessee. And those representatives gathered in Montgomery, Alabama in 75, and their plan was to, to do a study to basically to to convince the Department of Interior to regard a Bartram Trail as a national scenic trail. Um, the, the Bureau of Recreation of the uh, Department of Interior actually contracted with the Bartram Trail Conference to produce a report and, and with recommendations. And that, that report and recommendation, if you ever get a chance to read it, is, is, is worth looking at. It's, it's, we call it our Bartram Heritage Report. And inside of that report is basically an accounting of what are considered kind of primary Bartram sites, as well as an accounting of Bartram's travels, uh, an attempt to in interpret those travels, their significance, and place it into a, what, a, a cultural, literary, historical uh, landscape. That effort was not successful. Uh, the Bureau of Recreation and the Department of Interior decided not to create a Bartram Scenic Trail. But in their response, it's, it's, it's interesting. They thought, well, okay, it, you know, this is not a zero-sum game. This is not a, it's not a black and white situation. It's actually pretty profoundly gray. And, and what I'm getting at is, is the Department of Interior said, no, you have many worthy, many worthy segments here that are worthy of, be, of becoming their own trail, um, you know, perhaps even national scenic trails. And you have, and you also have this, this, this kind of concept which was set, set forth of a, of a string of pearls. Like, you know, here's a way to connect disparate places, places that you, you know, you wouldn't want to connect with a tour, or you wouldn't want to connect with a hiking trail, or you wouldn't want to connect with a paddling trail, but they can be connected conceptually. And so, out of that, out of that we have today's Barkham Trail. And so, you know, probably the most noticeable um, um, evidence of it, as you see in today's Ravine Gardens, or Bartram Trail markers. I mean, there, there, there began uh, basically a, 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 an entire marker program throughout the Southeast to kind of commemorate places where Bartram had visited. In addition to that, there were efforts on various uh, state and federal agencies to create Bartram Trails. Uh, the Corps of Engineers created a 30-mile Bartram Trail on the south shore of Lake Thurman. In Georgia, we still call it Clark's Hill Lake. Um, uh, there was a footpath that was set up in the mountains in South Carolina, Georgia, about 40 miles, and in North Carolina. Um, uh, let me talk a little bit about, and, and here I just want to kind of give you a quick canvas of what that trail is. So, you know, you have seven miles of hiking trail in South Carolina. You have the Georgia Trail, the, the, the real party behind the Georgia Trail was the, the Forest Service. They are the primary, um, th they were the architect, they are the, they are the group that takes care of it. And the Bartram Trail in, in North Carolina is a different deal. It's 80 miles, much of that trail was actually laid, you know, in cooperation with the Forest Service, but it was done by the Bartram Trail Conference of that state, you know, North Carolina Bartram Trail Society. And so those two agencies have worked together to both create trail and to main trail. And then in Alabama, you have the, an eight-mile segment in the Tuskegee National Forest, which was designed initially as a foot trail, but it's really kind of become, as Catherine will say, what a de facto a mountain biking trail. Like I said, the same thing happened with Lake Thurmond or, 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 or Clarks Hill Lake. Uh, it was trail that was initially set out as foot trail, well, people did not want to hike that trail. Um, uh, here again, it's it, a, a combination of, of both distance and, and, and pro probably landscape and maybe, maybe the, the climate itself. 
but there was great interest in using that trail as a mountain biking trail. So what, what had fallen into abeyance as a foot trail became a pretty, is, is now a very active mountain biking trail. Let me talk about canoe trails. Uh, the Bartram Trail Conference in North Carolina established a, uh, a canoe trail on the Little Tennessee River. Um, boy, this, this is an old number here. In, in the Tensaw Delta, the, there's now close to 200 miles of trail that, that were set up and designated by the ba Alabama Department of Natural Resources. And uh, sorry, it's misspelled here, but we have a Bartram Canoe Trail in Durban Creek as well. And adding to that list, we're gonna have, we're gonna have the Seven Sisters Island as well too, as well as Dunn's Creek, right? So, Mike, uh, you know, we all talked a little bit about how we got into the trail, and I just wanted to talk a couple minutes about my, my entree to the trail was actually through recreation. It wasn't through reading the travels, or it wasn't through, it wasn't through understanding um, 18th century history or civilization. And it, it actually began with a marker at Warwell Mandel, which is pretty close to this scene right here. Uh, actually, this is the Bartram Trail, if you look at that ridge line of Raven Ball in, in the mountains. And uh, it began with me saying, hmm, Bartram Trail, who's William Bartram? <laughs> and uh, and that, that was about 15 years ago, and so here I am now. <laughs> so many people can come to Bartram many different ways, and that's, that's been my experience. Here we go. I'm sorry, I'm going to shift this out of Putnam County here, but if, you're ever, if you are in the mountains, uh, this is one of Barbara, Bartram's favorite spots in, in North Georgia, which is Martin Creek Falls, which he, he writes... Uh, about very poetically, and, um, and this might be a chance for a shameless plug. You know, the Bartram Trail Conference itself is going to hold a meeting up in the mountains this October, which is not too terribly far from Martin Creek, and uh, so I invite you all to come, uh, and I've got some flyers for that as well. You know, Sam very kindly mentioned the book. One, one of the things we, we, uh, we, as we took, actually we took this from from St. John's County and from the Bartram Scenic Highway in St. John's, we, we took their Bartram Scenic Highway as, as, a, as a point of inspiration. And so one of the things that we did is we constructed driving tours for, for areas where we thought, well, there just isn't enough public land or, there, or the public land is too chopped up to have a, a paddling trip or, 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 a, or a hiking trip or a biking trip. So this is the driving tour that we constructed basically from Palatka through, through, uh, through Paines Prairie up to Gainesville. This is the Little Tennessee Canoe Trail, which is uh, a very scenic paddle just, just north of, uh, just south of, of present day Franklin, North Carolina. And here again, this is, this is, uh, this is our inspiration for, uh, for our own driving tours. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>